So the next thing we're going to be covering with Hasbro PulseCon today is our deluxe classes from Transformers Legacy United. We got four new deluxes to talk about. One of them we've already covered uh, just a couple of days ago. You could go check out that segment. We'll cover some updates on it and some new information that we got from the Hasbro Pulse Transformer team. So let's jump into it right away. Not much else we're going to cover Let's do it. So the first one we got here of the deluxe class is our first true of our new modulators, these Transformers Armorizers. And this is the Infernac universe again. We're going into the Inhumanoids universe. If you want to know the whole history on what is Infernac and that whole universe, go check out the previous segment with the core classes. And I kind of break down what's going on with that. If you want to get the whole story and what's written behind, you know, the scenes in between the lines, like we always do here on the Transformers Swag podcast. But we got the Infernac universe Magnius. So this was an Ajima-san design. And when they first showed this, I literally thought it was an extreme partial or retool of our Junkion axle grease that we got from Legacy Evolution. But it looks like it's actually a brand new tooling. And it's again this... Hey, the robot mode is very rock lordy kind of thing. And then the alt mode is a vehicle with rock parts on it, which looks so weird. Again, I, I don't want to hate on it, but it's such a weird design choice. I know that they want to stick with vehicles, but it is kind of bizarre. But I dig the rock modes. Those look kind of cool. So just like how with Boulder Crash, that was going to be something that's quartz or lava. This one is obsidian. This is the obsidian stoned one for the armorizers. And according to Mark, he said like Ajima-san, like his intent was that the chest would be kind of empty because it doesn't have a spark. It's not a sentient Cybertronian. It's more of a drone or some kind of element like that to be used for like the armorizers and everything like it. So that's, you know, that's an interesting in-universe take. I don't know how this is going to be used in terms of fiction in the future. Are we going to even see it maybe in the, the comic books that we're going to be getting through Skybound and Image? We don't know. But we do know that this character does have that modulator system. It does come apart and attaches like armor and everything like they list in the copy that it says, you know, it becomes accessories and weapons and this guy comes with an axe and stuff. It does look cool. It does look cool. Again, it, it reminds me of another Rock Lord character and has a very similar look to it, but I guess they just couldn't go the full way because a lot of those designs are still owned by Bandai and stuff. So I, I get that they couldn't go full Rock Lord, but at the same time, those, those alt modes and this one, it's like, it, it literally looks like the axle grease just with rock parts on it. But very, very unique kind of look here. Again, I think I need to see it in person. I think that'll win me over. It's hard to tell right now, but hopefully we'll get some better images, some more information. And uh, when I have it in person, maybe I'll be won over by it. By it. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, they also talked about the animated Bumblebee. Again, we already pretty much covered everything about it. The only new information that we got was uh, this was a design done by Mark and Yuya-san. Uh, Yuya-san actually worked with uh, professional car companies as a car designer, so he was like really instrumental on doing the alt mode for this and doing it justice. Uh, because of the small size of the figure to stay in scale with being a deluxe class, and they didn't want to obviously go with a core because that would be too small, but by baking it a smaller figure as a deluxe class, that led room for more budget and parts for plastic for weapons. So he comes with four pieces of weapons here, two boosters and two stinger pieces that could combine. Uh, there was a big initiative to really nail the perfect yellow because a big issue that exists always is painted uh, yellow is very hard to match with molded plastic yellow, especially when the two are together on a figure. So they tried really hard to match both the yellow that was painted on the body and the molded in yellow plastic to make it look really good. And they're pretty happy with the result. And I think it looks pretty good too. I like it. And they gave a few Derek Wyatt shout outs and that's some really awesome stuff. Uh, then we got our rescue bots universe chase. So this is, this is the really interesting one of the bunch because now we're going into the nostalgia of something that what's, which is crazy when you think about it, you know, rescue bots came out 2010, 2011 uh, it's, you know, you, you take a deep breath and you go, oh my goodness, that's already a 13 year old brand and five year olds who grew up with like, let's say rescue bots or four year olds that grew up with rescue bots. They're in their late teens now, and they're going to have nostalgia 
for rescue bots. And that's pretty nuts. And they did a very good job modernizing Chase here. Obviously, uh, they get all those cues from that of the animation model because all of the old rescue bot toys were very kind of blocky and simplistic. So you never got that perfect Chase character outside of like a PVC figure. Uh, this was a Mark and Kuniharu-san design. And they did a great job. It really does an, a fantastic effort. It matches the correct blue like used in the animation model. Even the Energon Capture Claw weapon that was included with him, that's a nice little deep cut because w before the show came out, there was a standalone, non-transforming electronic figure of Chase that had a claw weapon. And then when they did the Energon-infused rescue bot figures that came with energon weapons he had a claw energon weapon there too and that became like a a standard association with that character we would have like a claw energon weapon so they kept that and they included that as an extra accessory so that's a really nice touch there also which is cool and it also might lead to something else we're going to get to in a moment but it has the light bar on the roof it actually splits into two separate pieces, the light bars, and then can be plugged in on five millimeter pegs on his wrist to make little blasters. But again, by the light bar being removable, that also suggests that there could be a whole bunch of other slew of repaints and retools planned from this. Has a very, um, you know, very like Mustang kind of looking 1960s, 1970s motor vehicle from the USA. I can't really pinpoint it because it's hard with the photos here. I don't have the, the HD photo of the alt mode yet, but when I get some good shots, I'll be able to see like the headlights and everything and the taillights and really make a close call. But I think it looks really good. And even BMAC kind of teased, he said, not to really, you know, spoil anything, but all the retools and repaints of characters that are going to come down the line from this mold are going to blow your mind. So I was like, oh, BMAC, what are you getting at here? You know, so... Very interesting. And at the end of the day, hey, it keeps the Chase trademark alive. That means we could get a throttle bot one day. So there's a lot going on here. Very happy with it. And I'm pretty sure if you're a Rescue Bots fan, you will be very happy too. And the last one we're going to cover is a Cyberverse Universe Deluxe Class Windblade. We kind of like talked about it when the little images were teased online. Even the, even the Hasbro Pulse guys kind of made a mention of that. Uh, this is a Kokisan design. And just looks really good. I've said this before. Windblade was long overdue for a proper uh, Cyberverse figure. She had a, she had some Cyberverse figures, but none of them were good. They didn't have proper transformations, or they didn't come with her sword. It was a very you know low effort and you know attempt at a character that literally was one of the main characters of the show, if not one of the main characters of the show. So looks really good. I love the paint on it. I love the heavy boot design like the Cyberverse uh, animation model. Her Stormfall sword looks really nice with the translucent plastic. The opening cockpit is an extra nice touch. And even uh, kind of throwing back to her Cyberverse character, she has rotating uh, rotor blades on her shoulders or on her wings so she could use that as an attack. Again, that was also used in the show. So that's a nice element too really keeping true to everything with that and is truly finally the Cyberverse Windblade character we always wanted. Also has the removable uh, fan on the back of her head that could be held in her hand. A lot of cool stuff here. Can't wait to pick up this one too. And she looks amazing. And that's our deluxe classes, but we still got more to cover. We got Voyagers, we got leader classes, and of course, we also have some more of the deeper stuff with the art, with the Hall of Fame and everything. We're going to cover it all here today. So stay tuned here on the Transformer Slag podcast. And thank you for listening.